जय श्री कृष्ण जय श्री स्वामी नारायण ओम नमो नारायण आया वेलकम बैक Today we are looking at chapters 41 and 42 in book 2 of the Ramayana. Chapter 41 is called Adyotya and its people mourn for Rama's departure. After the tiger among men had departed with folded hands and reverence, great cries of distress arose from the private apartment of the king. Rama was the protector and refuge of those who do not have any one. those who were weak and those who do penance and where does such a lord go he does not get angry even when we shout at him and he never does any act which makes others angry also he pacified those who get angry where does such a great soul go he who has great luster treated all of us like his mother kasalya and where does such a great soul go Due to being tormented by Kakadi, King Dasartha ordered him, who was the protector of the world, to go to the forest. Where does he go? Alas, the senseless king has sent to the forest he who is the darling of all beings and who is the votary of truth. Like this, all the queens cried loudly like a cow separated from its calf due to their great sorrow. the king who was suffering due to the sorrow of parting with his son hearing this dreadful wailing from his private apartments became much more sad the householders did not make offerings to the fire nor cook food and also the people did not attempt to do their daily chores even the sun appeared to be dim elephants dropped down the handful of food that they took cows did not suckle their calves and even mothers after seeing their first born were not happy Trisanku, Mars, Mercury, and Jupiter were fiercely approaching the moon with a pitiable aspect. The stars had lost their strength, and the planets had lost their luster. And the star Vishaka, the star of Kosalya country, was shining with smoke in the sky. The great ocean was aroused by a wind similar to the deadly wind at Deluge after Rama departed to the forest. and the city was greatly shaken all the directions on earth were agitated and covered with darkness and the planets as well as the stars were also not shining suddenly all people of the city were feeling depressed and nobody was interested in food or recreation all the people of adyotya were caught in the nets of a very great sorrow and were often breathing heavily and were sad about the fate of dasartha the faces of people who were walking in the royal avenue had tear-stained faces and nobody could be seen there who was not sorrowing at that time the breeze was not blowing and the moon was not pleasant to look at and the sun was not hot and the entire world was agitated the sons were not bothered about their mothers and the husbands were not interested in their wives and similar was the case among brothers all of them left everything and were thinking only about rama all the friends of rama had a mind which refused to think and they were all depressed by their burden of sorrow and they were not even bothered to sleep that adyotya without the great rama looked like the earth with its mountains but without indra caught by fear and sorrow and agitated horribly and occupied by army elephants and horses who were producing great sounds and the sounds chapter 41 chapter 42 is called the sartha wells further yes kitty would you like to join in in the reading <laughs> that's fiona <laughs> as long as the dust raised by the chariot of rama who had set out to the forest was visible that son of the ichuvaku dynasty did not withdraw his eyes as long as the king was able to see his son who was a great follower of truth the dust appeared to be growing over his chance of seeing his son when the king was not able to even see the dust then with the increasing grief and great sorrow the king fell down endowed with foresight humility and virtue that king with great pain saw kakali and said to her O oh, evil one, O oh, Kakali, do not touch my body. I do not want to see you, as you are neither my wife nor relation. 
those who depend on you for their lives, they are not mine, as you are interested only for my wealth, and you have forsaken Dharma, and so I am giving you up. I, who has taken you by taking your hand and going around the fire, am renouncing you in this and the other world. If Bharata takes over this imperishable kingdom and enjoys its benefits, the sacred water he gives to me, who is his father, after my death will not reach me. Then that extremely sorrowing Kasalia raised up the king, who was coated with dust, and took him back to the palace. The soul of Dharma, who was greatly sorrowing due to having seen his son as an ascetic, felt as if he had intentionally killed a Brahmin or placed his hand in a burning fire. Turning to see again and again the trail of the chariot, that sorrowing king's form appeared as if it was the moon caught by Rahu. That sad one thinking of his beloved son, the king wailed, and understanding that he has reached the outside of the city, said, that splendid vehicle has carried away my soul like sun, and I am able to see only impressions of the hooves, but not that great sun. My great sun was till now sleeping on pleasure-giving cushions. After being applied with sandal paste, being fanned by gracious women, but from today he would sleep somewhere, searching for a root of a tree, and sleeping with a piece of rock as his pillow. That unfortunate one would get up from the earth being coated with dust and breathing heavily like the elephant arising from the Prasaravana mountain for the she-elephant. The people who wander in the forest from today would be seeing the long-armed Rama walking there like one who will protect them. From today, that daughter of Chanaka, who is used to a pleasure-filled life, would be walking in the forest troubled by piercing thorns. She, who is not accustomed to the forest, would suffer great fear, hearing the roaring of wild animals, which is fearful. O oh, Kakeli, let your desires be fulfilled, and you live in this country as a widow, for I am not interested in living without that tiger among men. The king, crying like this, was surrounded by a lot of people, and they entered the city like one entering a house after a funeral bath. Seeing the entire city of Ajotia with deserted palaces in highways, with closed markets and temples, with sick and very weak people who were exhausted with grief, with very empty great roads, Dasartha entered the city with a heavy heart like the sun entering behind a dark cloud. His great heart was perturbed like the lake from which Suparna snatched away the serpents due to the absence of Sita, Rama, and Lakshmana. That king cried and told his attendant with a choked throat and a feeble and sad tone, You please take me to the house of Rama's mother, Kasalya's house, because in no other place my mind will be at peace. When the king told like this, that doorkeeper took him to the home of Kasalya and there with humility made him to lie down. After having entered the house of Kasalya, even though he occupied the couch, he tossed about to the king that house where he could not see both his sons as well as his daughter-in-law looked like the sky without a moon. That valorous king, seeing this, lifted his hands up in a loud tone, shouted, O oh, Rama, you have forsaken me. Those great people are blessed who will live till Rama returns back and are able to hug him at that time. What a pity! That night appeared like the night of death to Dasartha, and in the midnight he spoke to Kasalya. O oh, Kasalya, my sight which followed behind Rama has not returned back till now. I am not able to see clearly. Please touch me with your hand. Kasalya, who was sitting by his side, seeing that the king was thinking continuously of only Rama and no one else, was greatly distressed, and breathing heavily, she started crying loudly. Thus ends chapter 42. So, uh, my kitty was over here crying out. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, my girlfriend has changed work schedule, and so this is the first time she's not home at the appointed hour, and the cat's got the memo, but you know how it is with animals and keeping track of their calendars and things. They're not so good about that, like us humans. <laughs> No thoughts. My cat chimed in. So those are the thoughts for the day. Thank you as always for joining me. 
And until next time, Jai Shri Krishna, Jai Shri Swami Narayan, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare.